Here we are, my friends, a very special edition of InfoWars Nightly News. It is Wednesday, January 4th, 2012, and I interviewed Bev Harris, the head of blackboxvoting.org, the recognized expert uh, on election fraud across the United States and really worldwide. And she said, clearly, there's evidence, telltale uh, signs, earmarks of fraud in Iowa. But we've got her joining us tomorrow, and we'll learn more then as the dust settles. But we're going to break down some of that here in a moment. And the incredible media attacks against Ron Paul by Al Gore, the Democratic governors, the entire political system is going after him. That's a pure certification that he's the real deal right there. The question is, do the American people still buy in to dinosaur media propaganda sold by the architects of the tyranny that we live under today? We also have a satire piece coming up. A Cobra Commander, who loves torture, TSA sticking their hands down your pants. He's going to be joining us because he's got a special announcement tonight he's going to make here on air. He's running for president. He thinks the American people will actually elect him. He loves torture. He loves terrorism. He loves corruption. And he works with Al-Qaeda. Cobra Commander, coming up tonight. I'm going to interview him. You don't want to miss this. Talk about being on both sides of the fence here. It's coming up. Okay, uh, getting into the media attacks, Ron Paul was pretty much in a statistical dead heat. Uh, there was only a few hundred votes difference between the so-called front runner, Mr. Open Borders, Mr. Abortion, Mr. Obamacare, Mr. Gun Control, Mr. Carbon Tax, Mitt Romney, and then Santorum, who's come from nowhere, and then Congressman Ron Paul. And uh, the exit polls and other data were showing Ron Paul winning handily. The, the majority of polls showed that, but, but, but suddenly it was basically a dead heat with all of them within one point uh, or so of each other. Uh, the problem is uh, that I talked to a lot of the people that were at caucuses today on the radio, and this has now come out in some of the mainline press reports in Iowa. It was amazing. You'd have the lights go off when they had all put down their ballots and handed them in when one guy had the sack, like out of an old Who Done It movie where the lights go off and they turn back on in a minute and somebody's dead or the Maltese Falcon has been stolen. That was happening. Normally they do just raise their hands and it's publicly tallied in a lot of precincts. They didn't do that. They said, you've got to put them on ballots and then now, there were trucks that came up missing with four or five precincts, and we've got all of this broken down, but here's a headline out of the Tribune. One long caucus, one delayed official add up to late results for Story County, one of the key counties that had a whole bunch of precincts involved. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Fox News contributor and the architect of the Bush crime syndicate, uh, Carl Rove, came out and said they had a gentleman's agreement on who really won that county so you can trust them. And this stuff happened all across Iowa. And of course, Ron Paul doesn't want to challenge it because then they say, oh, he's being a sorry sport. But clearly where there's smoke, there's fire and something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Uh, here is that clip along with a great graphic we put together of Ron Paul in the lead until Carl Rove comes along with his magic. The same stuff we saw in Florida in 2000 and in Ohio that's now been certified as fraud and as a stolen election. Here's that clip. Romney is going to win the Iowa caucuses by 14 votes. By 14 How votes. solid is your evidence? Uh, your, your, your... From, from a pretty good, reliable source. Uh, they made the correction in Story County, which moved it from an 18-point margin for Santorum to a four-point, a four-vote margin for Santorum. Clinton County, right. you have the one outstanding precinct in the state, and that it will show an 18-vote uh, victory in that precinct for for. Mitt Romney, which will give him a statewide victory of 14 votes over... And over from out of Rick nowhere, Grant it's Santorum. Rick Santorum. So I, I don't understand. You're saying that they basically have come to an agreement as to what the, the vote's going to be in the, Clinton? The, the uh, official, the person who's got the official piece of paper is missing. But oh. the Romney and Santorum people who are monitoring it agree on what the number is. They apparently have rounded up the representatives of the camps who have agreed, yes, we were there, we know exactly what the vote total was, and we both agreed to, uh, agreed to what it was. Kind of like it was Carl Rove in 2000 that announced that Bush had won Florida when he hadn't. And I'm no fan of Al Gore, you know that, but they stole that. They stole that. And they've done it again. 
And it, again, this is only the tip of the iceberg. It is so frustrating. Here's the examiner out of Washington. Karl Rove, Romney has won Iowa by 14 votes. And this was hours before all this was confirmed. And you've got all these precincts missing and then magically, again, how they do it is they flip the lights off or the votes are disappeared and then more are added and some are taken out or both. And uh, if people have done this before and been caught doing it, why do you expect it not to happen now? Almost all the scientific polls had Paul winning by huge margins. But then magically he comes in third. Now, granted, it's a statistical dead heat, you know, with a point or so between the three of them. But it happened. And, and, and again, it's these key big counties where it happened that pushed them over the edge. Again, we're just showing you county by county numbers right there. <sighs> Fool me once, shame on uh, you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I mean, fool me a hundred times. I'm brain dead if I continue to buy this known fraud from known scammers. We'll continue to break this down, but talking to Bev Harris today, who's coming on the show later in the week, the, the TV show, New Hampshire is where the real fraud goes on and where they've got those special voting machines. Uh, the main company that runs it's run by a convicted felon. Uh, so that's uh, the type of, uh, for fraud, by the way. So that's the type of stuff we're dealing with here. Uh, here's another Kurt Nemo article, DNC-linked organization attacks Ron Paul. Now, they've got the big rhino groups coming after him, but also the Democratic Governors Association is coming out saying he's dangerous and trying to scare seniors. Hey, what's scary is the mega banks that have already stolen people's public pensions in Europe and who've said they're going to do it here by freezing colas the last three years, your cost of living expense, it is your money, you did pay into it. And on top of it, devaluing the dollar. They're already stealing your Social Security. Let me ask you a question. For, for folks out there that are helping grandma out or helping your parents out or, or, or older folks that are watching, you already know your check isn't buying what it did a couple of years ago. They cook the inflation numbers. They cook the unemployment numbers. I mean, give me a break. So you got that. And, and then I don't have time to get into it. We had some clips. We'll play them tomorrow night. Al Gore on his current TV, the guy that wants you to pay him to breathe, uh, he's come out and, and said Ron Paul's silly and all this other stuff and had the young turd guy, uh, the young turds, uh, you know, whose wife's a CPS person, uh, sit there and uh, make jokes about it. I mean, you've got a discredited pig, a man bear pig, an imaginary creature, a fraudster, uh, who when he's not, you know, supposedly groping uh, masseuses, tells us we should pay him money to breathe. I mean, it, it, sometime this fraud's got to end. Now, speaking of fraud, CNN reportedly finally aired this today, many hours after it was supposedly live yesterday, but we talked to reporters uh, on the ground who've given us uh, good intel in the past that it was a few minutes delayed with Wolf Blitzer. And they had all these other camera people there in the same building and that this feed was not dead. Uh, and then uh, coming up, we've got an interview with one of our reporters got with him with the actual soldier uh, who expanded on what CNN was so afraid of that they that they censored it. But here's that quick clip of CNN pulling the plug on the live feed. And one of my producers pointed out today, if you watch the feed after this, you see a line of reporters joking about pulling the feed in the background. You can see them making jokes about the feed being cut right after it happens. Here it is. That's right, and we have uh, here somebody who actually did just go vote for Ron Paul, a first-time caucus voter, uh, Corporal Jesse Thorson, who is 28 years old, and you are active duty U.S. Army. What did you vote for uh, Ron Paul? Well, I'm, I'm really excited about a lot of his ideas, uh, especially when it comes to bringing the soldiers home. I've been serving for 10 years now, and all 10 years of those have been during wartime. I'd like to see a little peacetime army, and I think he has the right idea. Now, you have done two tours in Afghanistan. You told me you're going to go back for a, for a third tour. I mean, if you can see your, your neck right there, what you have on your tattoo, 9-11, remember, and a picture of the Twin Towers. You know, some Republicans out there have been saying that Ron Paul would be very dangerous for this country because he wants to bring troops like you back from your post from all over the world. Well, I think it would be even more dangerous to start nitpicking wars with other countries. Someone like Iran, Israel is more than capable of... All right, we just lost our tech connection, unfortunately. I have another speaker. That's not how a connection cutting out looks. And we had reporters there, multiple reporters that confirmed they had TVs running right there of what was on television versus what was taping. They were a couple minutes behind. So this was taped to air. They were running a giant delay. We see this on C-SPAN when government drug dealing comes up, and then this happens. 
So one of uh, our great correspondents out there in Chicago who actually traveled to Iowa to cover this, uh, he, he broke it down and sent us the audio that he recorded uh, right after this happened today. Uh, and then we've got later after it happened, Ron Paul calling him up on stage. So their attempt at censorship backfired. Uh, here's the actual interview uh, with uh, the veteran. Night, uh, just for some, your name and where you're from. Okay, uh, my name's Corporal Jesse Thorson, and I live in West Des Moines, Iowa. Um, what is it about Ron Paul that made you come out here uh, for caucus night tonight? Uh, well, first and foremost, I've been in the Army for 10 years, and uh, all 10 years of those, we've been at war. And he's one of the candidates that want to bring us all home from that war and stop police in the world, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. Uh, he, he's just got a lot of good ideas, and I think that he's got the change that can really shake up our country. Congressman Ball has been talking about bringing not just our troops home from Iraq, Afghanistan, but he's talking about bringing all the troops home from all the foreign base, all the foreign countries. What are your thoughts on that, and what, how big of an impact could that be to bring all of our troops home from all these countries? Well, I think in, in a way we need to support our allies, but at the same time, I think that we could support our allies from our home front. If, if we need to go somewhere quickly, we have assets and troops that can do that, and I don't think that scattering us all over the world is going to really make that any more efficient. Congressman Paul has been receiving not just here in 2012, but in 2008, was the only candidate to get the most support from campaign contributions from active and veterans in the military. What is it about Paul's message that gets the military so enthusiastic about him and his message? Well, one of the things is, is he's a military man himself. Obviously, he served in the Air Force, so that definitely strikes a chord with anybody in the military. Uh, second of all, he doesn't want to cut any of our any of our budget, and then when he does cut budget, it's going to be some of the more frivolous spending that goes on in military spending with government contracts and stuff like that, instead of cutting into the pockets of the soldiers and their families. Now, you have the rest of the uh, GOP field talking about Ron Paul's foreign policy as a bad thing, as something that the country should be fearful of. As uh, someone who served in, uh, in the war, what are your thoughts when you hear other people in the field, or even pundits on TV mention that Paul's foreign policy is bad for the country? Well, anyone I hear say that Ron Paul is could be a dangerous president, especially someone like Michelle Bachman saying that, uh, I, I think that's absolutely ludicrous. She obviously doesn't know what it's like to be on the ground over there. And I think that a war with Iran is a little more dangerous than letting Israel take care of their own problems. I was just going to ask you about that with, you know, the, the rest of the GOP field talking about going to war with Iran as sort of like a game of risk, just playing, you know, our soldiers off as uh, maybe pieces in a game. In your mind, is going to war with Iran a good thing or a bad thing for the country? And what would the ramifications even be? Well, for obviously for someone like me, it's a horrible thing. I have a family and nobody wants to go over there and risk their lives. Now, for some people in political power who might get government contracts through KBR and stuff like that, war brings money and they know this. Uh, but I, I think it's it's a bad thing. And, and, and Israel, they've said several times they can take care of themselves. And I think that we should let them. They have a very strong military and I'm pretty confident they can handle their own. Um, final question. Well, two more questions, actually. The National Defense Authorization Act, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Um, your thoughts on the whole militarization, the policing in this country? The bill even goes as far as saying as the, the military can detain American citizens. What are your thoughts on that and just, you know, the military's role in America? Well, I don't think it's the military's role to detain citizens unless they're committing acts against our country. And, uh, you know, I, that, that's got to be left to the experts to really determine who, who is committing the acts and who's not. Overall prediction tonight and the rest of the way for Ron Paul, if he wins Iowa, how big could that be for his campaign and getting more and more people enthusiastic about it? Well, I'm very obviously optimistic about this. All right, he's very enthusiastic, but we all know that the uh, globalists clearly got in there and engaged in some type of secret activity. They counted the votes in secret right there. I mean, there's your proof right there. And we're supposed to be gullible and just buy into it. But there you got to hear a large snippet of him not being censored. We're going to post the rest of the interview. There's like 10 minutes of it tomorrow on InfoWars.com. Now here, uh, and uh, uh, by the way, great uh, uh, reportage by uh, our correspondent out there, Julio, uh, now, uh, let's go more uh, uh, to the veteran and the current serving uh, um, uh, troop, uh, Jesse Thorson, right here where Ron Paul and others bring him up on stage, something the establishment doesn't want you to see. Here it is. For quite a few years, and you may have met him because he's been around here this evening, but I'd like him to come out and, and say a few words. 
He's been serving in the military for 10 years, and he's been overseas a lot. A lot of it was in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he was on TV tonight, and he didn't quite get to finish his statement. So I've asked him if he would get come out and make his comments about why he supports our foreign policy, why he is fighting for the Constitution, and what he thinks we should do. But I would like to invite out now Jesse Thorson to come out and say a few words to you. Thank you. had a vision for this country, it is definitely him. His foreign policy is by far, hands down, better than any candidates out there. And I'm sure you all have. You don't need to pick your fights overseas, and I think everybody else knows that too. I, I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted right now. This is a federal moment for me. I can't believe it. It's like being a rock star. But you know what? We're going to go to New Hampshire. We're all going to get involved. We're going to keep getting online. We're going to keep talking to people. And we are going to make sure this man is the next president of the United States. What was it like having Ron invite you up? Well, great job, Mr. Thorson, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, and his wife, Carol. Uh, Ron's wife and a revolution pack for getting us that incredible footage we just premiered here to you. Uh, just amazing uh, to uh, see what the alternative media is doing, becoming the mainstream media. We are supplanting the globalist deceivers. Okay, uh, let's continue here uh, with some of the news. I've got some more Ron Paul news. Business Insider reported Ron Paul may have secretly won the Iowa caucuses, and their point is. Most of the, the Iowa caucus is a glorified straw poll. It's, it's, but then that decides uh, the delegates that go on to the national level at the convention. And the Republican insiders know this, so they try to change things for a broker convention where if they don't like who wins it, they can finagle it. Uh, Ronald Reagan in 1980 was told, you put George Herbert Walker Bush on your ticket, this is on record, or you won't, we won't nominate you. And so a lot of this stuff can happen behind the scenes, but Ron Paul has got so many people at the grassroots getting into delegate positions, a lot of them who are even later going for other candidates, but are really going to flip-flop for Ron Paul. This is really one of the big secret weapons we've got to counter what the establishment does. So very, very exciting on that front. Ron Paul has also blasted back at the Chicken Hawk Genrich. Uh, I mean, all of these mainline Republicans dodged military service. Ron Paul did in five years in the Air Force. Uh, you know, during, during wartime operations. And uh, he pointed out, Genrich has no business talking about danger because he's putting other people in danger. Yeah, it's always these people like Richard Pearl who are self-propelled stomachs, uh, who couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag, who talk about murder and death like it's cool. Anybody who's actually been in a bunch of fistfights or war, even worse, knows, you know what, it isn't fun. And it's not something we're looking for. Violence is something that has to be done to defend yourself. It's not something that's manly and cool. I mean, if that was the case, you'd be, you know, oh, a 400-pound guy beat up a 100-pound woman. Isn't he tough? Or look, Mike Tyson beat up a woman. That No, that's shameful. And people who are more strong oppressing the weak is pathetic. And, and Newt Gingrich is just a warmongering, torture-loving, secret arrest, police state piece of trash who wants every form of globalist tyranny. I mean, open borders, world government, end of the family, carbon taxes, Obamacare, he is a piece of trash. And the public woke up to him. But what about Mitt Romney? He's exactly the same. I don't think he's inherently as evil. I've studied Romney. He's not an actual globalist initiate, but still he's bad news. I mean, Newt Gingrich is bad news. Yeah, we've got a, a clip of a Paul here talking about uh, the uh, chicken buzzard. Here it is. I don't want to ever fight a war that's unconstitutional, and I'm the dangerous person. You know, when Newt Gingrich was called to service in the 1960s uh, during the Vietnam era, guess what he thought about danger? He, he chickened out on that. He got deferments, didn't even go. So right now, he sends these young kids over there to endure the danger, and the kids coming back and the young people coming back, and the ones in the military right now, they overwhelmingly support my uh, campaign. 
Okay, hitting a few more uh, news pieces here before our interview with another uh, tyrant. I mean, nowadays being a tyrant's the good guy. So if you had G.I. Joe cartoons today, not in the 1980s, when I was watching them, I was actually a little old to watch them, but I still snuck in a few when I was like 12 years old or 13. Uh, G.I. Joe doesn't torture. They don't secretly arrest. They follow the Bill of Rights of the Constitution. Cobra Commander tortures and does horrible things. But now... The good guys wear black mask and dress just like Cobra Commander. Uh, that's coming up. Uh, but I wanted to shift gears to something uh, that's in the high-tech range. Uh, the Daily Mail reports uh, the plane built to soar above the clouds on Saturn's mysterious moon Titan. They're sending an unmanned drone to Titan, which I'm all for exploration. Uh, the problem is the government lies so much. Who knows if they discover something that will even be told. But they're sending the unmanned drone. It's propeller driven once it gets there to fly around and around Titan and send back messages to the planet Earth at a cost of $715 million. The Avatar probe is built to take 3D photos of the surface. They believe there could be life on Titan to help scientists build a picture of the planet's geology. At the end of the mission, and by the way, it's huge, it's, it's bigger than, than most planets, the 120 kg aircraft would drive down to the surface and attempt to land on Titan's dunes. Wow. Talk about amazing. That is certainly cool. And closing out our news segment tonight, uh, Obama says he doesn't even need the National Defense Authorization Act to definitely detain Americans. And I pointed this out a month ago. I said, look, they're already killing citizens without a court trial. They're already saying they'll do this. Obama threatened to veto it because he says, I don't need Congress to give me the authority. Congress said, OK, we'll change it and say you're a dictator. And he said, OK, I'll sign it. And boom. He signed it with a big, fat Barack Obama. Uh, but it woke a lot of people up when that happened. Now, here's a piece that our reporter and researcher, Darren McBreen, uh, put together. Because every time the new videos come out of troops killing dogs, people get really upset. They shoot them, they, they stab them, they throw them off cliffs, they blow them up with hand grenades. Every time this happens, or people's sheep or cows or horses uh, over there in the Middle East or Central Asia, people say, oh, it's a fake dog, but later it's confirmed, no, they're doing this. This is what the bad elements do. And if you don't decry it, you allow that to infect the rest of the military and discredit them all, when most of them are good men and women. So defending this type of psychopathic uh, behavior discredits the entire military, and at the end of it, we have some examples of, 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 of how the military should behave. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go to this report here on InfoWars Nightly News. Don't forget the websites are InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. That's mean. That was mean, Matari. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, done. Dude, look at we people all in there. <laughs> dude, those two people. You see I who pulled up in the white car? I, I shot that dude in the white car, ran in. Oh yes, you're gonna get it. Yes, naughty little boys. <laughs> yes. 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 Right here in this window, we've got the ugliest kid I've ever seen in my life. And, uh... Ugly. He's, uh, as you can see, he's only got uh, two front teeth, and there's about wow. a gap in front of him. He's got a disease on the corners of his mouth. <laughs> he's got like droopy eyes that stick out of his head. <laughs> I gotta stop right there. These are the type of guys the government's recruiting to become police officers, on record. And this is a kid who's grown up his whole life under sanctions where no medical equipment can be brought in. His whole country's been bombed with depleted uranium. But you know what, jackass? You think it's funny to laugh at him and the 14 times increase in birth defects there? The troops coming back are having birth defects in their children and are getting cancers early. So you go ahead and laugh. How about when your kid's got droopy eyes? How about when your kid dies 
of brain cancer, you son of a bitch. This isn't funny. And what happens to your kids and our, and our veterans' children isn't funny. And what's been done to the Iraqis isn't funny. And it being done in America's name isn't funny. You're a punk. And then, and by the way, the stuff we're showing is nothing. I mean, th th we got stuff so much horrible, they're shooting whole families up for fun. God help us. You know, the Army's own report from Abu Ghraib admits the rape of children in front of their parents as young as four. And don't you ever do that in my name. And I'm sick of the neocon media telling me this is patriotism. This is demonic evil. And it's not on my soul. By the way, three million guns were sold in the month of December. You think the globalists think they can hire a bunch of thugs? You're going to come after us and you're going to win a fight? We're not looking for a fight. But you start it, you can't stand against people on the right. Remember that. Now go back to this evil. country is stinks like ass. What you think about that? No. You, it sucks? Doesn't it suck? You smell like ass too. But the pictures from Abu Ghraib, you remember the, the, the excrement storm that pictures that look like a fraternity prank caused? They don't know English, right? So I start cussing them out and saying all this b and they can't understand me. And I say it with a smile and they think I'm like just being nice to them or something. I'm I am an, an idiot. An idiot. We, we beg, beg to, to much. much. This, this country. 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 Crazy Horse 1, uh, a request permission to uh, engage. You're picking up the wounded. See how trying to get permission to engage. Come on, let us shoot. Crazy Horse 1A. Even on the blurred footage of third or fourth generation that we're seeing, you can see the little kids' faces looking out the car, and they know, and then they laugh about it later. That's got to be the most painful part about this, because this is destroying the name of our country. thinking at the time when that the, how many civilians could have been inside there I mean just like any kind of conflict there's people that are hiding inside of places that are unable to come out of these buildings out of fear that they're gonna be killed by the enemy or our, our enemy for leaving or out of fear that they're gonna get shot in the streets because when they do they come out and they, they do get shot in the streets trying to get away I gave the order for them to use the missiles on the building so we hit it and uh, then we stormed into the building, and there was uh, there was um, two 14, well, looked but about a 14-year-old kid, a six-year-old kid, and a young, uh, maybe this could have been her husband. I couldn't tell because he was so messed up, and a woman that was bleeding, not severely, and all she was she was screaming, "Why, Laish, Laish!" But. I started to cry. I started to cry. I wanted to rip my hair out, what hair I did have, and go nuts. So there is a person with a soul, but the addled, psychically retarded people that are already in the devil's uh, grasp, they think it's funny. A family that has some sheep, that is their entire investment, their entire life, they're going to starve. Iraqis have starved by the hundreds of thousands on record. And they just, oh, let's throw a hand grenade in. In fact, there's videos of the family they catch in the woods getting some firewood, and the government says you can't do that. So they run over their family car with a tank. And it turns out a family of like 10 people is living off the guy getting about one taxi ride a week.
and they run it and they run they shoot the car up run over it laugh and the family's sitting there crying they go that's what you get when you loot and then i play this stuff and say the troops shouldn't act like this it should be decried even if you're going to have these wars and i'm called the traitor those of you that go along with this evil, you are the plague. You are the traitors against the human species. Don't you fools get it? If you can do that to some dirt farmers and goat farmers in the middle of nowhere, the globalists are going to do that to us here. And they do. They let the troops use DU that they know is a death sentence. And you know what? When the troops start dying of this stuff and their kids pop out totally deformed, the VA won't even help you. So remember, they don't care about the Iraqis. They don't care about you. And when you lose your human empathy, you lose your, it's your nerve endings. Being paralyzed, being numb is not something that's tough. I know they teach that that's really tough. Uh, McBreen's put together some still images here. We'll roll uh, of, 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 of some of the humanity and, you know, there has been military people, a lot of them, by the way, you know, when, when, when the helicopters kill those, shoot up those families and those kids, you know, it was the military on the ground got to see the splattered kids with their guts hanging out and actually took them to safety and then got made fun of. I saw neocons say they were traitors, let the children bleed to death with their guts, you know, hanging out of their bodies. Because, see, they're the type of people, they now have civilians driving the drones bombing people. You don't have to smell the blood, see the dead kids. You can just sit there and get medals and be a real man 10,000 miles away with your drone blowing up little children. Also, some oil companies can have the oil and some companies can have some, some no-bid contracts. It is truly evil. And so I don't want to hear any criticism of the Nazis when they did. It was terrible. But they were told follow orders and they were fighting enemies. I don't want to hear about the Soviets being bad. I don't want to hear any of it. For those From those of you out there, I hear you on talk radio that think it's really tough. I mean, I heard... We played that Limbaugh clip, Abu Ghraib raping children, you know, is blowing off steam. Really sick. That's how psychos talk. Uh, how about Michael Reagan saying, shove hand grenades in children's rectums? I mean, it's pedophiliac anyways. I mean, this is the type of, again, the clips are so numerous. And again, I mean, I can't be your type of patriot. If patriotism is shoving hand grenades in children and killing them, I'm sorry, I'm a bad person then. If patriotism's hailing Al-Qaeda, being given control of Libya by our criminal government. I'm sorry, I don't work with Al-Qaeda. If that's bad, then I'm bad. I'm the bad man. Uh, we're gonna go to break and uh, come back with uh, our special interview this evening. And uh, I mean, really, uh, if, if all of this villainy is now good, we've got to embrace Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Jack the Ripper, Joseph Mengele, Pol Pot, Julius Caesar, Vlad the Impaler, Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy, Ted Bundy, and then fiction. People can't seem to be touched by real world tyrants and, and the parallels to what's happening, the black uniforms, the cameras, the, the NDAAs, putting on the books to arrest us, the TSA groping our children, clear prisoner training. Maybe you can connect some of you out there who are new viewers with fiction. So we're going to interview Cobra Commander, little cutesy tyrant on the other side. It's InfoWars Nightly News. We are the cutting edge of true alternative media supplanting the dinosaur corporate whore media that feeds at the altar of a bunch of dead children. We are the answer to tyranny. We are the answer to the 1984 society. We are 1776. America is in trouble. Washington is a disgrace. Government has become too big. It's overtaxing, overspending. We need to change direction. We really need change. We can't afford to make the same mistakes we've made in the past. Mitt Romney's reputation as a flip-flopper. He went the other way when he got paid to go the other way. There is need for economic stimulus. It's about serial hypocrisy. This election is about trust. There's been one true consistent candidate, and that's Dr. Ron Paul. Ron Paul has been so consistent from the very beginning. 
candidate. He seems like a more honest candidate. He tells the truth about what he believes, whether you like it or not. He's never once voted for a tax increase, never once voted for an unbalanced budget. Ron Paul's plan is bold, cuts five departments. It's what we need. When he says he's going to cut a trillion dollars in the first year, I believe it. If you don't like how things are going and you're tired of politicians, he's something different. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Is the one we've been looking for. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there, InfoWars.com. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. We're now joined by humanitarian and overall trendy Cobra Commander, he is an international terrorist, a dictator over third world countries. Uh, he's involved in bioweapons, weapon sales. Uh, and, and now in the modern America and modern world where torture, secret arrest, TSA, groping your children's genitals is what the good guys do, I thought we'd have him on. Uh, I know the media reaches out to Cobra uh, Commander or Cobra Leader quite often, uh, and uh, he refuses to come on. but. He has agreed to do this interview because he has a big announcement tonight to make uh, to the people that live in this 1984 society. And again, if you're not with uh, the Cobra leader or Mr. Cobra, uh, then uh, you're not uh, a modern trendy. So I want to thank him for joining us this evening. Uh, Mr. Cobra and associate, um, I guess, minion, kind of like North Korea. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Cobra leader. You pathetic little worm. How dare you call me Mr. Cobra? I am Supreme Cobra Commander. You call your petty bureaucrats, officials, and authorities you will kneel before Cobra or face my wrath! You pathetic little worm, how dare you call me Mr. Cobra? Your Supreme Excellency, your graciousness, your Royal Highness, Cobra Commander. I should give you the same attention that other mass murderers get who run empires like the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II. I apologize. Uh, the corporate media for a long time has wondered who you actually are. And since I got your title wrong, will you please tell us who you are, sir? Because tyranny is so trendy right now. Why not reveal yourself, your lordship? None of your pathetic business, worm, submit to me. Even this gentleman here to my left is a servant of Cobra. For decades you've known him as the real Cobra commander. Only now am I letting you pathetic people know that it is I, the true Cobra commander, who have ruled from behind the scenes. Oh, man. And I always like the Bill of Rights and Constitution and due process. It is so cool. You just are talking down to me. Now I know how other Americans feel. We like being slaves. Thank you, sir. Oh, I've got so many other questions. Thank you for giving us this big, gracious interview. Miss Napolitano, I'm sorry to reveal your identity. I mean, forget that. Uh, Cobra Commander. Why are you agreeing to this interview? You said you had some special announcement for us. Uh, please uh, tell us uh, what that is, sir. I am the leader. I am Cobra Commander. I have agreed to this interview so that you might know that I have decided to go public and to have a public stock offering in Cobra Global Enterprises. I intend to issue my own fiat currency, but before I do that, I intend to sue Homeland Security for copyright and trademark infringement. Black uniforms, black uniforms. 
ski mask, checkpoints, black armored tanks on the streets, preemptive war, torture, wireless wiretapping, total tyranny is the new freedom that Cobra has taught the world, and now Joe and the Pentagon have stolen my plan and hired Al Qaeda to carry out their operations in Libya, which they formerly did for me. Now clearly America and the rest of the system has realized that I am the true visionary. And so I now announce to you and the world the greatest moment in the history of Cobra! Cobra! Ah. I will now sit for president and run on the Republican Party ticket against that plagiar of Barack Obama that's stolen so many of my ideas. Clearly an America that loves indefinite detention and the NDAA and torture and secret arrest is ready to be ruled by a true tyrant. I was a snake and an oppressor before it was cool. Hail Cobra! Cobra! I am running for president of the United States and from America. I will continue the policy of global corporate war against the third world, death and destruction, forced inoculations. Hail Cobra! Well, you're obviously keeping us safe from terrorists. I just only have a few more questions. Your supreme helperness is officialness is authority it is a powerful government. I know that you are a humanitarian and care about the population. What about climate change? What about carbon taxes that are being implemented? Where does COBRA as an organization stand on that, uh, sir? As your future president, I agree with Al Gore to be able to breathe or engage in any activity you will pay not Gore, but me, your supreme leader, money to breathe. If you want to engage in any activity, you will get permission from Cobra. And I now have a giant homeland security bureaucracy and police wearing Cobra uniforms who are ready to strike fear into the slaves who will implement this system. So the answer, you pathetic worm, is yes, I will allow you to live if you pay me to breathe. Al Gore has served us well. What's your electoral strategy? How do you think you're going to be elected? Cobra is always confident. Not only do the American people clearly love my style of leadership, but if they are woken up by traitors against evil, like Ron Paul, I will simply implement the electronic voting machines and the gullible sheeple will buy it all! Hail Cobra! Cobra! In closing, your worshipfulness, what is the essence of what you want to impart to all the people that want to live under authoritarian rule. And remember one more thing, you pathetic little worm and all of your viewers. You belong to me. Tyranny is freedom. The freedom for psychopaths like me and the armies of millions that serve me is the future. Resistance to Cobra is unstoppable because I'm keeping you safe from Al-Qaeda. <laughs> Get me Bin Laden in here for orders. Get the CIA on the phone now and have them hail Cobra. Well, that's our interview with Cobra Commander, and I'm going to be honest with you. I, uh, in the past, thought that people like Cobra Commander were bad, but I'm a patriot. And now the government says torturing children in Iraq, uh, secretly arresting Americans is good, uh, putting cancer viruses in vaccines is good. And so really people like Cobra Commander are the good people. Like in the Bible, Judas is a good guy. Barabbas is good. Jesus is bad. Uh, nowadays, you know, the Lone Ranger is, is, is bad and, and the bank robbers are good.
I'm beginning to realize that I was wrong and I was an extremist the entire time. And uh, global government is a good thing. And uh, we're really lucky and blessed to have people like Cobra Commander uh, here to keep us safe. And, and I'm glad he's running for president. He'll keep America safe. We need a tough guy like that uh, in there to, to ship guns into Mexico. And so here in this age of tyrants, let's go all the way. Let's Let's elect Cobra Commander. I'm supporting Cobra Commander for president. Doesn't matter, he'll seal it through Diebold uh, machines anyways. And I'm glad that uh, Cobra Commander uh, has put a uh, contract out uh, on anybody talking about the Bill of Rights or Constitution. And I'm glad that Cobra Commander stands against terrorists like Ron Paul. Well, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. Hail Cobra!